Hey there, Mr. Colby Sharp. Greetings from my living room. I am here right now to talk about Onion John, winner of 1916, the 1960 Newberry Medal. Now, Mr. Sharp, in five minutes, I'm going to be leaving to go to the Kane County Cougars baseball game. My plan was to film this Newberry video there during the baseball game, but it looks like it's going to get rained out because it's been raining all morning. So I'm just going to go ahead and make the video now because I don't want to be stuck uploading this at like 3 in the morning and feeling guilty that I didn't get it uploaded on time and the post didn't go live. So anyway, Mr. Sharp, I have only 4 minutes 44 seconds for this video. I didn't delete any of the old videos because, as I said, I need to leave in now 4 minutes. Mr. Sharp, the winner of the 1960 Newberry Medal, Onion John, is written by Joseph Crumgold. And Joseph Crumgold is a familiar name to the Newberry Challenge because he also won the 1954 Newberry Medal. Now, as you know, Mr. Sharp, this author was the first author to have ever won two Newberry Medals. According to the back of this book, he is the only. Now, I believe there are two other authors who have won the Newberry Medal twice. Lois Lowry for The Giver and Number the Stars, and E.L. Conningsberg. I believe those are the only two. I may be wrong, um, so if people want to fact check me, go right ahead. But Mr. Sharp and I will have read every Newberry Medal, so we will know by the end uh, all of those stats, and we'll be able to tell our students interesting things, such as the authors who, the first author to have won two Newberry Medals. All right, Mr. Sharp, I'm totally rambling and have no train of thought, so I better get going. Onion John was an odd book, all right? A totally odd book. I enjoyed the relationship between the boy and Onion John. I liked how the boy was the only person in the entire town who could understand this eccentric man. And that once people realized that he could understand Onion John, people started coming and having him almost translate conversations and explain the man. I really enjoyed this book the more I think about it. Actually, when I started to film this video, I was thinking, eh, I don't really have many positive things to say about it. But as I start reflecting back on it, I really do. I liked that you have this man who's eccentric and different from most people in the town, but the people in the town accept him. And I enjoyed the message at the end that I believe the boy and his father realize is that just because we may not agree with how someone lives or we may not make those decisions. It doesn't mean it's, it's wrong. That if Onion John wants to live in a house without electricity, a house with four bathtubs lined up side by side, that's okay. And if the boy doesn't want to grow up to be an engineer and be the first person to walk on the moon like his father wants him to be because his father never got to, be, never got to do any of those things, it's okay. And hopefully kids of the 1960s were able to um, get that message. Now, I'm not sure how many kids still read this book today. It's never been checked out from my library. I would be interested, though, to see what kids think about this book. Now, all of my fifth graders are reading a Newbery Medal or Newbery Honor winner for the first trimester. And maybe I can see if one student will check this book out and give it a go. Because I think it would be interesting to discuss. Uh, I liked the way this book ended. I'm not going to say because as we're getting to the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and today, uh, people will actually read some of the books that we talk about, Mr. Sharp. Now I'm up to four minutes and time's going to run out. I cannot believe how much I can talk, Mr. Sharp. I'm so excited for our book club about Hattie Big Sky on September 5th. This book just arrived yesterday, Safekeeping. I cannot wait to read this tonight when I get home. I'm going to start it, and oh my goodness, it's going to die. Annie and Helen, we did a blog post about this book yesterday. It was so fun, and a picture book that I have, a picture book that I'm so excited about that just came out. Bear Has a Story to Tell by Philip and Aaron Stead, two authors from your state of Michigan. This is a beautiful picture book, Mr. Sharp, one that I cannot wait to read to my students 